Welcome everyone. I'm Laura DeFranco, the CEO of Brave Healer Productions, where we have a mission to wake the world up to what's possible. And here today to help me with that mission is one of the amazing author experts of a new book that we have coming out soon called Mindset Mastery, Awareness, Meditation, Mindfulness, and Manifestation for the Spiritual Warrior. Welcome, Star. Nice to have you back on the show. Honored to be here. Thank you, Laura. I'm excited about having this conversation with you. You guys, we put this book together that is a collaboration of real stories and master teachings. Our authors are sharing their lives and the tools they've used to thrive with you. And today's author and guest is Star Studanovic. She is a Reiki master, certified yoga instructor, calligrapher, and leader of rituals. Um, Star, first of all, thank you so much for being willing to share your story and your incredible master teachings in this book. The book, you know, is it's full of these powerful awareness practices like yours that are going to transform people's lives. I get excited about this. Would you share a little bit about your chapter with us to start off? To start with, the chapter never would have happened if I had not had um, a heart attack and surgery. So what I decided to write about is how do you get through that and how do you get to the other side and how do you thrive afterwards? Because you're in a very dark place and you're not only in a dark place from what happened physically, there's the mental and spiritual component to that. Is my life over? Is this all there is? And when you have a to-do list of what you want to do in your life, you need a roadmap of how to get back on track. So that's what the chapter is about. Oh my gosh. Uh, so with, yeah, it's, it's hard to ask you a question without you then having to spill the whole story and give it up. But, <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't want you to spill the whole thing, but, okay. um, you know, <laughs> you just said that it, it just, it, it laid you out like you really got put in, I call it the pit. And, you know, mm -hmm. people will find themselves at the bottom of a pit and they really don't know how to even begin climbing out. What, what was the first thing you had to do? The first thing I had to do was realize where I was. Mm. And that was, where are you mentally? Where are you physically? Where are you emotionally? What's going on? And I mean, are you literally talking about waking up from anesthesia? Are you talking about the weeks after? Where, tell me more about that. Some of that is waking up from anesthesia because you were on a heart-lung machine for an extended period of time. And that scrambles your brain cells. It makes you feel like your brain is Swiss cheese. You lose memory, but you know the memory's there. You just can't retrieve it. And with that, there's depression. Uh, when you go from being very, very physical and running the equivalent of five miles a day to being on the couch using a walker on oxygen, it's a pretty dark place. But you have to start somewhere. And if you're starting at the bottom, the only way to go is up. <laughs> That is for sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. And I'm glad that you mentioned depression because, you know, with this, with this book, Mindset Mastery, um, there, there are many authors talking about all levels of this and um, a depression, especially from an illness or during a recovery phase from an illness is, it can be pretty intense. I'm sure there were days where you felt like you weren't getting out, but you know, you have devoted your life to this journey and you are one of the masters, I think, because of that. I am such a mindset geek. Okay. So to me, awareness is everything. It's what makes the difference between kind of a mediocre life and an amazing life. What is to you this, this idea of being a master of awareness and mindset? What does that mean to you? How does it, how does it look in your life? It's a daily practice. No, being a master means that there's lots to learn. It means that you have tools, maybe a small toolbox, maybe a big one, 
but you have to use it. And being a master is about discipline and about being open, open with your heart, open with your mind, and willing to do the work and willing to know that there's a lot you don't know. That's just the beginning. Yeah. Beginner's mind, learner's mindset. It's something that we, yeah, it's something that we learned in my martial arts practice. It's really like when you earned your black belt, you, you don't really realize what you know, you realize what you don't know at that point. Yeah. And then you move forward from there. So I, you know, go ahead. No. And using different tools, be willing to be open to that. Um, one of my dear friends and Reiki mentor uh, did anointing with oils. And that's something I had not experienced to a great extent, but it was incredibly healing. And it was a combination of different oils put in different parts of my body and done with ritual, done with Reiki. It makes everything makes a difference. It's not just one thing. I think people get in a mindset where if I do this one thing, everything's going to be okay. No, that's why you've got a toolbox. You can use everything. Food, food is medicine. Realize that it is, ingest it with the energy of receiving something that will heal you. Change your mind about what you're doing. If you're eating a simple meal, It's a feast that will heal your soul. It will heal your heart. Look at it that way. If you're doing a Reiki session, know that you're on that table to receive the power of the universe. And all that universe wants for you is your best and highest good. So be willing to dive in. I love those mindset golden nuggets that you just shared. Those are really, really good because... You know, you guys, who who has lately sat down to a simple meal with that kind of attitude, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> that, I mean, that could be a game changer for people, you know, this, this beautiful feast that's feeding not just your body, but your mind and your soul, your energy, all of the things, right? I love the visual you just gave me, Star. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. So, um, you know... I think for some people, this is not so easy. Uh, It's easier said than done. And you mentioned practice, you mentioned discipline. I believe that these are lifelong practices that you create a discipline out of that practice. You commit and everyone kind of goes back and forth, right? You could fall in and out of it, right? Um, what's, What's helped you stay in it? Getting pissed off. Mm, tell me more about that. Why? Uh, there was one night um, I woke up at three in the morning, which seems to be my prime time. And I was just plain pissed and angry. <clears throat> I had to use a walker to go to the bathroom. Um, I was on an oxygen thing that I'm dragging behind me, come back to the couch. And I just had a fit. I just spoke aloud of how angry I was and how pissed off I was and why did why did this happen and the the whole pity party thing why me and a voice inside just said why not you which made me more angry (laughs) but once I moved through that because I think you need to move through that stage and get through the pity party Then I thought about it like, okay, well, what now? I don't want to stay in this place. I want to get back to better than I was before. I don't want to stay on a couch on oxygen. That's not what I plan for my life. And it starts with your mindset. You either want to stay there or you want to move forward. And it's a choice. So start with baby steps. Start with the little stuff. Simply start with finding something to look forward to. I love that you used, you know, the fact that you got pissed off. Like, um, 
I'm trying to envision the, the list of um, emotions and, and vibration from low to high. And anger is actually a little bit higher than I think it's like depression or what, it, you know, so it's it actually is. a tiny bit healthier to just let yourself be angry. Yeah. Tell me what you know about that. You releasing it will make you feel better. If you keep burying it and hiding it like a cat in a kitty litter box, that kind of shit still stays there. Yeah. yeah. So face it. And a lot of this mindset work is come to terms with it and face it and be honest about it. Don't sugarcoat it. Where are you right now? How do you feel right now? What do you need right now? And you don't have to have a laundry list of everything you need, name one thing and start there. Yeah. I like that baby step. That's a great, a great way to start, especially if you are feeling stuck. Um, and I love this topic so much. And um, I can tell you have a lifetime's worth of knowledge and practice, which is makes it so fun to be here in, in this group of amazing authors that we have for this book. And I know you have a lot going on aside from writing in this book and for this book. So tell us how people work with you. What are you up to in the world? What do you have going on? I'm having fun. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite things is movement. One of my favorite, I have lots of favorite things. Reiki. The fact that you can use different tools with Reiki, that you can use your own experience and do guided meditation with that maybe help someone through a stumbling block simply energetically by giving them the space to open themselves up. So many times people will come in for a Reiki session. They've just battled traffic. Their heartbeat is rapid. Their breath is up in their throat. Start with your breath. Begin to calm that down and put your place in a, in, put yourself in a place where you can actually receive. If you're relaxed, if you're breathing well, if your mind is calm, then you can listen and receive. And then the universe can give you what you need. And don't be afraid to daydream with that. What do you really want? What do you need? And one of my jobs, in my view, is helping someone get there so that they can receive. Get the body ready, get the mind ready, get the spirit ready, and then just let the magic happen. Are you working both in person and online right now? I do distance healing and, and distance Reiki online. I do it in person. I have a Reiki room in my home. I work with primal movement, which is getting people to actually move in a way that's useful. Uh, it's one of the things I love about Annie Adamson's yoga work is the fact that it needs to be a tool to improve your daily life. It's not about opening up a magazine and looking at a picture in a view of someone in a beautiful pose and thinking, oh, I want to look like that and get there. It's about taking you to a place where you can use that reaching in a cupboard for a dish that's up high. I love it. Functional. It's functional. Yeah. And too many times people think, oh, this is this esoteric thing and I'm not limber and I can't do it. If you can breathe, you can do yoga. <laughs> I love that. But you go back to what yoga actually is defined as. It's your body, mind, and spirit coming together. Uh, where are you, Star, working in person? I'm in Southeast Portland, Oregon. Okay, good. I want to mention that for anyone who's in that mm -hmm. part of the country. Um, so listen, you guys, one of the biggest missions I have with every Brave Healer Productions book is to help our readers and you listeners live extraordinary lives. You can hear that Star does that too. And no matter where you are on this journey, this particular book, all of our books are going to help you answer that question. What else is <clears> possible? <throat> So Star, what I'd love to close out today with is what's a simple stepping stone that you'd like to share with the listeners today to help them jumpstart that journey? What's that one thing you want them to know today? One thing, <laughs> breathe. Take your breath down to your belly bowl. 
sit quietly even for two minutes and soften your emotions, your mind, and your body. When something is soft, you can receive. When you're rigid, you have a shield. Remove the shield. That's the fastest way to do it. I love it. When you're soft, you can receive. That's a nice reminder, too, of, of the breath. Because the inhale, exhale will begin to soften that rigidity. Love it. Star. And it's the most it's the most basic thing we have. It's your fundamental of life. It starts with breath. Honor that. Yeah. Most most basic and quickest way in. Honestly, you guys, like that's it right there. You have access any moment of the day. I love it. I love it. Star Studanovic, thank you so much for what you do in the world and for being here today to share it with everyone. Laura, thank you for putting this together. This is amazing. You have gathered people who were on the same journey, just on different paths. And you've woven this together like an absolutely gorgeous blanket that will comfort and soothe anyone. Oh, thank you. Um, I, I'm so honored and grateful to you and all of the co-authors for, for being here to help me weave that. You guys, Mindset Mastery is coming out January 23, right? So mm -hmm. until then, if something that you heard Star say today made you curious, you have a question, maybe you need some support, just scroll down to the show notes. You're going to be able to connect with her on her website there. And she is very generously there for you to help you take those next steps. Um, so go check out all of the amazing things that she has going on and you're also invited to continue the conversation that you heard today in the Brave Healer book club group on Facebook. I have the link below for that as well. And you're invited to the book launch party for Mindset Mastery. We're having that on January 22nd. The link with the Zoom information is below for you. I'm going to have all the co-authors of the book there sharing their wisdom and inspiration and if you happen to be listening to this anytime around the dates I'm mentioning, then you could hop over to Amazon by then and grab your beautiful copy of this book. <laughs> and lastly today, everyone, remember, your words change the world when you're brave enough to share them. So it is time to be brave. See you next time, everyone. Thank you, Star. That was awesome, Laura.